life on our planet has such a fragile existence. Many weird and wonderful species of animals have graced our planet's surface, but failed to stand the test of time. Whether a volcanic eruption, climate change, or competition, life on our planet has seen it all. Some of these events may have drove our lineage to the end of their lives. There have been at least eight other species of human that have lived on this planet, but now there's only us, Homo sapiens. Where did all the other humans go? This question has caused much debate amongst the scientific community, and many theories have surfaced claiming to explain these both sudden and gradual extinctions. In this video, we will be exploring the extinction of one of our closest relatives, Neanderthals. Please enjoy. Before we jump into the theories, we should first address the fact that Homo sapiens and Neanderthals interbred. Neanderthals are known to contribute between 1 and 4% of the genomes of non-African modern humans, and modern humans who lived about 40,000 years ago have been found to have between 6 and 9% Neanderthal DNA. Although modern Asian and European populations carry the most Neanderthal DNA, it's worth recognising that modern Africans still have a bit of Neanderthal DNA. The evidence we have of Neanderthal and modern human interbreeding sheds light on the expansion of modern humans out of Africa. For many years, the only evidence of Homo sapien and Neanderthal hybridisation existed within modern human genes. However, in 2016, researchers published a new set of Neanderthal DNA sequences from Altai Cave in Siberia, as well as from Spain and Croatia, that show evidence of Homo sapien and Neanderthal interbreeding as far back as 100,000 years ago. That's farther back than many previous estimates of Homo sapien migration out of Africa. These findings are the first to show Homo sapien gene flow into the Neanderthal genome, as an opposed to Neanderthal DNA into the Homo sapien genome. This data tells us that not only were Homo sapiens and Neanderthals interbreeding events more frequent than previously thought, but also that an early migration of humans did in fact leave Africa before the population that gave rise to all contemporary non-African modern humans. What role Neanderthal DNA has in us today is hard to determine, but most of their morphological features have gone, completely vanished from today's world. So I think it's entirely reasonable to conclude that Neanderthals are indeed extinct and didn't just assimilate into the modern human gene pool. Some of the DNA is found in parts of the human genome that are associated with skin and hair may be giving our ancestors thicker hair and skin that helped them cope better with the colder climate. Neanderthal DNA in modern humans seems to also be associated with diseases such as diabetes, lupus and Crohn's disease, which causes inflammation of the gut. A team of researchers from a number of European and American research institutions have produced detailed new studies from stalagmites that highlight changes in the European climate more than 40,000 years ago. They found several cold periods that coincide with the timings of a near-complete absence of archaeological artefacts from Neanderthals, strengthening the idea of the impact that changes in climate had on the long-term survival of these humans. Stalagmites grow in thin layers each year, and any change in temperatures alters their chemical composition. The layers therefore preserve a natural archive of climate change over many thousands of years. 
The researchers examined stalagmites in two Romanian caves, which revealed more detailed records of climate change in continental Europe than had been previously available. The layers of the stalagmites showed a series of prolonged extreme cold and excessively dry conditions in Europe between 44 and 40,000 years ago. They highlight a cycle of temperatures gradually cooling, staying very cold for centuries to millennia, and then warming again very abruptly. The researchers compared these paleoclimate records with archaeological records of Neanderthal artifacts and found a correlation between the cold periods and an absence of Neanderthal tools. This indicates the Neanderthal population greatly reduced during cold periods, suggesting that climate change played a major role in their decline. These changes in climate could have also impacted the animals living in the Neanderthal environment, putting them at increased risk of starvation. Most megafauna survived these cold cycles, but animals like the straight-tusked elephants, which Neanderthals used to hunt, went extinct. Researchers believe that modern humans survived these cold periods because their more advanced technology, such as clothing, everyday tools and hunting weapons, were better adapted to the environment than Neanderthals. Neanderthal's diets could be considered varied. Evidence from Gibraltar shows that when they lived in coastal areas, they exploited marine resources such as mollusks, seals, dolphins and fish. Plaque on the remains of molar teeth also show us that Neanderthals ate a variety of plants. Despite this, it seems that Neanderthals still had a less diverse diet than modern humans, living largely on meat from the animals they had successfully pursued. These food sources would naturally become scarce during colder periods, making the Neanderthals more vulnerable to rapid environmental change. In comparison, modern humans had a diverse diet, eating more types of plants, animals and seafood. This, coupled with their more advanced toolkit, is why researchers think that modern Homo sapiens were able to inhabit the lost colder territories that Neanderthals previously lived in. When temperatures warmed again, their smaller populations could not expand as their previous habitats had been occupied by Homo sapiens, and this facilitates a staggered expansion of modern humans into Europe. Another event that could have been the final nail in the coffin for Neanderthals was the eruption of a supervolcano called Campi Flagre. The volcano isn't as famous as others, as the majority of it is hidden underground, mostly under the Bay of Pozzuoli. Campi Flagre has erupted as recently as 1538, but one of its most explosive eruptions was 39,000 years ago. The ash from this eruption spread as far as Asia, and the winter that followed is believed by some researchers to have partly driven the Neanderthals to extinction. Many animals adapted to these changes and managed to survive, so why didn't Neanderthals? In a sense, the genes that were beneficial to Neanderthals during these harsh times did survive, in us, but a lot didn't, and these traits may have been the ultimate demise for Neanderthals. Neanderthals had a shorter life than we do. They tended to mature quicker and die younger. In fact, there are very little remains of Neanderthals who have lived past the age of 40. This could have slowed down the advancement of technology and the passing down of knowledge. This could have also meant that it was harder for Neanderthals to raise children, as the older, unfertile members of the group were dying off sooner than elder Homo sapiens. I've previously explored the role that elder members of the tribe play when looking after children in modern hunter-gatherer tribes. Elder members take the burden off the parents and reduce stress in the group as they can help look after the tribe's kids. This reduced stress could aid in spending more time gathering and hunting for food, as well as increasing fertility. 
It's already thought that most Neanderthal groups were smaller than Homo sapiens, but the shorter lifespan and lower birth rates means that the tribe was in a vicious cycle of maintaining or losing their numbers. Although Neanderthal children matured quicker than we do, it's only by a few years. A 12-year-old Neanderthal child found in Gibraltar shows that they were as developed as a 16-year-old Homo sapien. This simply isn't a good trade, especially when you consider how early they die off. Modern hunter-gatherers can live well into their 80s, and this long lifespan facilitates the passing down of knowledge and the ease of burden, something that I theorise Neanderthals lacked. Another trait that could have increased the pressure on Neanderthal populations was their stocky, short bodies, which would have required between 4 and 6,000 calories each day. That's two to three times more than Homo sapiens, which is certainly a disadvantage when your regular prey has started to disappear and your competitors are able to thrive off less food. As a result of this, Neanderthal population and range contracted, resulting in a much smaller gene pool, and we find evidence of this in many inbred Neanderthal skeletons. Many things like a smaller gene pool could have lowered Neanderthal birth rates, but one obvious example of Neanderthal's decline in fertility is the fact that the amount of stored body fat influences fertility in women. A decline in resources caused by climate degradation or competition with modern humans may have affected fertility, mostly for young women giving birth for the first time. When you couple this with the point I previously covered on why it was difficult for Neanderthals to raise children, we can start to draw a picture in our minds on just why these amazing beings slowly vanished from the earth. The reality is, it was probably all these changes and disadvantages combined that drove Neanderthals to extinction. Picture this, there is an adult male Neanderthal living in what is now France. Times are hard, the once giant straight tusked elephants have been slowly disappearing for the past few years and this hunting season has been particularly fruitless. The tribe have failed to catch anything other than a dozen birds and a deer. Time seems to have run out too soon and the cold snap of winter bites earlier than the years before. The tribe has no choice but to pack up and move south, escaping the cold spreading from the north. After waiting out the winter in what is now Spain, surviving off nuts, moss, mushrooms and the occasional rabbit, the tribe make their way back up north. When they reach their home, they find that things have changed dramatically. Homo sapiens have now taken over the land while the Neanderthals were down south. They are no stranger to the tribe as they have had interactions in the past. These interactions were peaceful and the tribe enjoyed the fruits of trade with these Homo sapiens. The Neanderthal tribe are struggling. The oldest member died while in Spain at the age of 42. Perhaps the sudden disappearance of fatty meat in her diet caused her to grow weak. The tribe was ill prepared for this migration. The numbers in the group have slowly dwindled over the past few years, with some abandoning the tribe to find better luck elsewhere. In an act of desperation, the Neanderthal male approaches the Homo sapien tribe. With very little talk between the two species, they manage to communicate, albeit very vague. The Homo sapiens see that the Neanderthals are struggling and invite them into the tribe with open arms. The Neanderthal tribe are very, very lucky. Similar interactions have happened all over Europe and very few of the Homo sapien tribes were so inviting and loving. The Neanderthals are now part of the tribe and they can live out the rest of their days learning and sharing ideas with the Homo sapiens. In a few hundred years time, these Neanderthals would have been completely absorbed into the Homo sapien gene pool. All their physical traits would have vanished. 
The Neanderthals in Asia and Europe have now disappeared. The last surviving groups of Neanderthals died out in southern Spain, leaving their story to be pieced together by us tens of thousands of years later. This story is of course entirely speculation, but I think it's a good idea to try and paint a picture of what life may have been like for a Neanderthal family in their final days. <laughs>